using your faith out of season. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, God, I ask that you cleanse us and cause us to hear your voice and obey and follow in your precepts. In Jesus' name, amen. The Holy Spirit is dealing with me and opening the eyes of my understanding concerning the thoughts and ideal of using your faith out of season. You know, um, we think that because we witness other Christians, other believers, other people who are men and women after God's own heart, just like we are, we witness that they are in a season where they are able to have faith for things that we thought we had faith for but did not receive the answer for. And so we begin to be deceived by the enemy because he will look for any back door to come in and influence us uh, against uh, the knowledge of God and the wisdom of God and the knowing, the revelation of God. And so the enemy comes into our minds and tries to convince us that we don't have faith. And he will even use the word of God, which is like our umbilical cord to God, you know, and wrap it around our necks in this season to choke out uh, our belief system and the faith, even if it's just a mustard seed of faith that God has given us. Hallelujah. I'm receiving this word as I'm talking right now, so just bear with me. Hallelujah. Bear with the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He's using a weak vessel to make his strength made perfect and to, uh, uh, and to bring forth his word in the anointing that breaks every yoke. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, that breaks every chain. Hallelujah. And so God is saying, God wants us to be aware of the enemy's devices. He wants us to be aware of the schemes of the evil one so that we are not easily deceived in calling good evil and evil good. Hallelujah. He wants us to be in practice operating in his discernment so that we can receive God's good and perfect will in our lives and not be hindered by deception and not die from a lack of knowledge. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so God was just ministering to me and saying to me that, you know, if you are operating in faith, in your faith out of season, then you are operating in the spirit of witchcraft because God is, you know, um, dealing with me on witchcraft on witchcraft on so many levels there's so many levels of witchcraft but god said the root of witchcraft is disobedience hallelujah and the branches of witchcraft can be you know um pride you know it can be so many things but pride is like the main word that's coming to me right now it's just one of the branches of, you know, uh, witchcraft, but God said the root of it is disobedience. So, you know, and in, in some cases, you know, in my heart and my mind, I wonder if I got that backwards, but I pray that the Lord will continue to, to deal with me. If pride might be, you know, the root and, um, if the branch might be disobedience, but anyway, um, the same result comes about, you know, and God is saying that, you know, anytime we operate in any of the gifts that he has given us out of season, then it is witchcraft. And what he is saying to me is that, um, it is disobedience. You are 
in opposition to the will of God. You are in opposition to the timing of God. You are in opposition to God's perfect will, and you are submitting to God's um, permissible will. And God, you know, is dealing with me also concerning his permissible will. He said that his permissible will was, will was not meant for us. It was meant for the devil and his demons, for Satan, okay, for rulers of of the dark world and you know so god god doesn't want us to um receive the same outcome you know that the enemy receives you know like hell and things like that so god is just saying that you know not operating in his perfect will for our lives we begin to operate in his permissible will for our lives. And he told me one day, he said, Jezebel thinks she has power, but she only has permission, which is a form of godliness, but it denies the power of God. And I'm like, Lord, what is your power? And depending on the point that God is trying to make, you know, at that time, God is revealing to me that his power is the grace and the ability for his holiness to be made perfect in our weaknesses, for his strength to be made perfect in our weaknesses, for his grace to be sufficient in our weaknesses. And so God is like, you know, just dealing with me on that. And so let's see. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so God is saying to me to be aware of this scheme of the enemy, you know, that you can know that you have the faith of a mustard seed. You can know that God will allow your faith to grow as you are obedient to him in the smallest things, in the things that you are able to obey. You know, like the I think of the serenity prayer where it says, you know, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. And please give me the courage to change the things that I can. And God says in your your acts of obedience and the courage to change the things that you can. Hallelujah. You are accepting the things you cannot change and you can, you are able to operate by his grace and his obedience and, you know, not try to use your gifts, but allow your gifts to use you to give God the glory. Hallelujah. To be able to testify of the goodness of God and not just the goodness of God and the mercy of God, but the justice of God. Hallelujah. The righteousness of God. God says only my righteousness is just. And that's why he considers our righteousness like filthy rags before him, because we may do what is right. But if it is not in the will of God or the timing of God or the obedience to God's voice, then it is not right. The righteousness of God, it is considered to God filthy rags. It is considered to God foolishness. Hallelujah. And God says that, you know, his wisdom will contrite and frustrate our wisdom. Hallelujah. Okay. So, you know, God is saying that if you are operating in your faith out of season, then it will grieve your faith. And God is saying do not grieve your faith because a grieving your faith is equivalent to grieving the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is, you know, the Holy Spirit is one with God. You know, you have the Father, you have the Son, and you have the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, it, you know, um, the Holy Spirit only works at God's command in God's timing. The Holy Spirit only obeys God's voice. The Holy Spirit does not obey our voice if we are not in the will of God or the timing of God. If we are not hearing the voice of God and being moved by the voice of God in obedience to God. And so God can give you the faith to claim healing. But God says that 
You will not receive your healing outside of his timing. And so if you are misusing your faith to claim healing in the season where you are supposed to, you know, endure, hallelujah, in order that he may get his testimony, in order that you may be taught, in order that you may per persevere, in order that you may build good character, then you are grieving your faith. Hallelujah. He is also making me see, you know, the Bible verse where it talks about if a man puts uh, new wine into old wine skin, then the new wine will burst the old wine skin and the old wine skin will be destroyed and the new wine will be wasted. And God is saying, do not waste your faith. Do not grieve your faith by acting in disobedience and do not waste your faith. Hallelujah. Uh, when we uh, began to operate in the gift of faith out of season and not by the voice and authority of God, by the timing of God, then we are using God's gifts and wasting it. And we are not allowing God to preserve us. God says, when you put uh, new wine into old wine skin, you know, it does not preserve the new, the old, the, the old wine skin. It does not preserve us. And God wishes to preserve us. He does not want us to burst by using the gifts that, which is equivalent to his new wine by using it in disobedience and witchcraft by using it not in the uh perfect purpose and will for God in our lives and perfect timing but using it in the permissible will of God which is a form of godliness but it denies the power of God to preserve us Hallelujah. Preserve us until he creates in us a new heart and a new mind until he transforms us by the renewing of our minds so that we can be created into new wine in order to hold. Uh, in oh, I messed up. OK, so in order for in order to create us into new wine skin is what I meant to say so that we can hold the new wine, which is the gifts that God has for us to operate with and in. Hallelujah. And so we are operating in and with those gifts. So when you're operating with something, that means that you're in sync to um, carry out a purpose, a higher purpose, okay? And so if you are in opposition with your gift, then you're not working with your gift. And there's no power that's going to come if you are not working with your gift and you're working, you know, opposite of your gift. Your gift is to the command of God. Your gift obeys the command of God. So if you're not obeying the command of God, then you're not in sync with your gift and your gift will cause you more harm than good. Your gift will cause people connected to you more harm than good because you are not operating with your gift and your gift is not, you know, able to carry out the perfect will of God in sync with you. Hallelujah. So that's why God says, do not grieve your faith because faith is a gift from God. Faith is a fruit of the spirit of God. And he said, against such is no law. So God is saying, listen, beloved, do not operate in your faith out of season. Wait for the season of faith. Hallelujah. So that whatever you have faith in, in that season will come to pass. And as you know, as you have faith and everything you have faith for comes to pass, your faith, like that must see the faith, will be increased. But your faith cannot be increased if you are operating in faith out of season and that and, and what you are having faith for is not coming to pass because you are you are operating outside of the will of God, meaning you are operating in witchcraft, meaning that you are not operating with faith, but in opposition to faith because because faith is an obedience to the voice of God and the authority of God. Hallelujah. 
And so when we speak in faith, we want to be sure that we are speaking what God, what thus saith the Lord, not just because we read it, but because we allow God to speak through us. God said in his word, open your mouth and I will fill it. And so we want to speak when God fills us. Hallelujah. So with his voice, so that it is his voice that speaks through us and commands that thing we are having faith for to manifest in our lives and the lives of others. You can have faith that God is, is able to heal you, but if he is deciding that he is not going to remove those thorns from your flesh in this season, and he decided that you know, his grace is going to be made perfect in your weakness. He decided that he is going to show you that his strength is being made perfect because although you are not feeling well, although you are, you know, uh, sick, you know, that he still gives you the strength to survive. He still gives you the strength to persevere. He And in the process, he's building your character and your character is to submit to the will of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So God has a purpose in all things, especially his timing. And we have to trust God's timing and we have to wait for God's timing. And that is the hardest thing to do when we know that God wants to heal us. That is the hardest thing to do when we know that God wants to bless us and to give us the desires of our hearts. That is the hardest thing to do when we have faith and we know that God wants to restore what the locusts have eaten and restore the years the locusts have eaten. And that we know it is hard to wait on God when we know that he has thoughts towards us, not to harm us, but to give us hope in the future. Hallelujah. And to establish us in his good and perfect will. So it is really hard not to operate in our faith in, in, in our will or in the permissible will of God when we need to be operating in our faith in the perfect will of God, which is the perfect timing of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So um, I hope that you was blessed by this message. Hallelujah. And I hope that you are being taught by the Holy Spirit how to allow the gifts of God to use you so that you are not using those gifts in the spirit of self-righteousness, which is like filthy rags before God and to allow and to just put your trust in God. Hallelujah. Sometimes we're in a season of faith where we get to um, allow faith to operate in us and we are working with faith. Hallelujah. To manifest what God has for us and to manifest our yeses. And sometimes Sometimes we are in uh, a season before we even get to that. We are in a season of trusting God when we cannot trace God. Hallelujah. God wants to lead us blindly sometimes so that we can learn to trust him. And it equips us to be able by his power, you know, and training to only move by his voice. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. So I just uh, wanted to put that message out there to you. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I want you to pick up these pearls and rock them. You know, um, subscribe, hit that bell button. If you're watching me on YouTube, you know what I'm saying? Like, comment, all that good stuff. You know, it helps get the message out there. I am just doing what I believe the Lord is calling me to do. He said, feed my sheep. And, you know, when God told me to feed his sheep, it is not in the in, in religious arrogance. OK, because I don't feel qualified, but I know that in obedience and the things that I can do, God is in the process of qualifying me to feed his sheep. And so I am just doing what thus saith the Lord and God will bring the sheep as he sees fit, as he add, as he adds anointing to his word, as he adds a blessing to his word. And I know that, you know, as I put these messages out, he, out here, that God is going to continue a work in me so that an anointing will be added to the word and people who are coming, when they eventually come, they will be blessed by my testimony because I am even going to get um, testimonies of God, the testimonies of God's love and mercy, the testimonies of, of, of God's word. I am going to be able to um, testify of the goodness of God, you know, as he 
uh, continues his work in me. Hallelujah. So when you do come, because I don't get a lot of viewers, but when the viewers do come, when those who have ears to hear does come to these messages, it will be in God's perfect timing where he will have already added a blessing to his word. And that anointing will break every chain. That anointing will cleanse people and cause people to hear his voice and obey. So be blessed by this message. Pick up these pearls and rock them. Have a blessed day. Later.